Hello everyone, my name is Cordy Up 707 and um, today I'm going to be reading the end on strange stories. A lot of you probably have not known that this exists, but it does. It's where I write all of my stories, not all of them, but most of them. And at the end of the video, I will describe the other stories on here that need work and help as well. But what we're going to be focusing on today is the end. And I have done a lot of editing through this. I will probably do a full read through if I have the time, but not today. I have certainly written a lot ever since the last part, which was part three. And I'm going to guarantee that this is going to be a very, very, very long episode. So, to those of you who don't know what's going on, um, Terror has defeated the Universal Trio, which is gravity, time, and space, and also the universe as well. And he is going on to the second phase of his plan, which is going to the real world and getting all the necessary things there, and then basically leaving it to rot. Last time we left off, we were actually right here, which doesn't make much sense. So I'm going to start a little ways up here at this transition. If things do not make sense to you and you want to read the story to yourself, then all you have to do is go into Google, type in strange stories. 707, all on word, and the first thing you see, you click on it, and then there you go. You got the website, <laughs> and the link is, of course, up there. But anyway, let's get on to reading, shall we? Terror is observing his bugs when Lucia teleports in. Ah, uh, I knew I could count on you, Lucia. It was easier than I thought. It always is that way with these humans. Terror turns around, smiling slyly at Kaylee. Especially this one. Terror shrinks down to his smallest size and beckons Kaylee. Lucia lets go of her, letting her fall to the floor. Lucia! You really don't know how to treat a guest, do you? My apologies, your majesty. What more do you want from me, you greedy hog? <laughs> First off, it's demon hog. Second, I don't need anything. Then why did you bring me here? To keep, after all, if there's one person I wish that were... <laughs> after all, if there's one person that I wish were my creator, it would be you. <sighs> why? Because your characters are dark and riddled and with hatred for their own creator. Heck, if they don't want to kill you, they're too depressed to do anything about you. <laughs> Kaylee looks down, knowing what he had said was the truth. If you were my creator, I would have so much more freedom and power to work with. I would look much, much better than this as well. look of sass. <laughs> I didn't feel like typing that out. Oh, come on, Kishle, don't give me that look. Terror leads her to a, into a bedroom. The room like it looks like it hasn't been touched in years, and some of the cloth has been chewed away. Terror sighs, looking disgusted and disappointed. <sighs> Lesson learned. Never trust bugs to clean a room. Smart, mo smart move, demon maid. Terror quickly whacks her on the back of the head without out of an out of annoyance. Sorry. Jeez, sorry. Terror turns to Lucia. Hold her in your quarters until the dark hogs work this room out. Dark hogs? Uh, yes, your majesty. What was that? Yes, your majesty. Better, much better. 
Lucia teleports away with Kaylee as Tara turns around and heads off into the hallway. I need to redo this part. As he walks, he start his look starts to look more like more human until Tara is changed into his full human form. Time to deliver the guest of honor. I would pull up the picture, but I do have to do a bit of searching into the le- real world. Maya is in her room, packing her backpack full of things she may need. All right, that should be it. Wait, emergency food. That's what I was forgetting. As Maya makes her way up the stairs, three powerful knocks boom through her house. Maya slowly peeks through the window next to the door. Terror smiles sinisterly, sinisterly back at her from, um, from underneath his long, dark purple hat and peers at her from behind his extremely dark sunglasses. Maya pulls away from the door. What? How is he here already? And why does he expect me to open the door for him? I guess he's just too much of a gentle devil for that. Just let me in already. Look of bewilderment. <laughs> Maya grabs the doorknob, but hesitates. Finally, she opens the door reluctantly. Took you long enough. Terror strides into the house, pushing past Maya haughtily and heads up the stairs to the kitchen. What do you want? You know perfectly well what I want, Vader did there. I want you to come with me to the stronghold. Terror opens the refrigerator. Ugh! It's a garden in here! How many fruits and vegetables do you guys even need? Why are you going through the fridge? Because I'm hungry! Maya slaps her forehead and lets out a huge sigh of frustration. <sighs> oh, don't give me that big sigh, Vader to dare. I have a name you know. Use it. If I were you, I'd use this time to pack up and don't pull anything on me. Yeah, yeah, whatever. When Maya finishes packing up her things, she heads back up to the dining room to check on Terror. He's gotten out everything that he could eat and has managed to make a meal out of it. Maya slaps her forehead. (laughs) I cannot believe you, Terror. What? You know you're going to pick all this up, right? Who are you, my mother? Just sit down and relax for a bit. I can already tell there will be lots of bickering between you and I. Maya plops down onto a chair at the far end of the table. Closer, darling. Maya rolls her eyes and scoots up to the chair in front of him. Much better. They sit in silence as Terror eats for a while. Can't stay mad at me, can you? Hmm. If you're worried about your little friend, Kishle, then you'll be happy to know that she is in Lucia's care at the moment. Now... Fun. I know it's not the best decision I've made, but she was the only one available. Terror holds out his white gloved hand. Your pack. Maya hands over her backpack and Terror inspects it. Then he looks at Maya with disbelief. Emergency food? Are you serious? I'm not going to starve you. Just in case, you never know. Yeah, right. Terror tosses the pack aside and continues eating. I thought you would bring someone with you. I did, they're in the car. Then why didn't you bring them in with you? Because I brought them for other reasons. Terror gets out of the chair and snaps his fingers, making the food disappear as if they were never there and starts heading to the door. Can I get a drink for the trip? Sure. Maya runs. Quickly runs to the cabinet and gets out a pop can. She closes the cabinet and then runs out the door as Terror is looking for the house's key on his key ring. He notices the can and gives Maya a strange look. What is that? It's pop. What's pop? Maya runs back inside and returns with another pop can. She holds it. She opens it for him and holds the can up to him. It's a fizzy drink. Try it. Terror gives her a look. Just try it. It's not going to kill you. Terror takes the can cautiously and takes a sip. Finding it sweet, he drinks some more. Terror wrinkles his nose and sneezes. What the heck? What was that? Must have been the fizz. Do you like it? Terror hands the can back to Maya. I can't say I don't, but I must be able to focus and keep my head clear of that fizz. 
Terror locks the door, grabs Maya's wrist, and heads out to his deep purple limo. He has a limo. He's so fancy. Terror opens the door. Oof. Whoops. <laughs> Terror opens the door and throws her inside. He climbs in after her and takes the middle seat between Maya and Kara. To the big house. The limo takes off. What's the big house? It's the White House, but they call it the Big House for some reason. I thought it was always called the Big House. Guess I interpreted that one wrong. The White House? But we're hundreds of miles away from Washington, D.C. alone. It'll take forever to get there. Not unless we are traveling faster than those pesky speed limits. What? What do you expect me to do? Actually follow those silly rules that you humans make? <laughs> what a joke. Suddenly, some police cars are at the, si are at the side of the limo, trying to keep up with it. Hey, boss, we got some blues on us. Wait, is that... Maya gets up and dashes to the front of the limo. Skull candy, is that you? Yep. You can drive? I had some lessons, but I'll tell you more later. I'm getting cornered by these blues. I need to find a different word. They can't get cornered on a road. Maya dashes back down the limo and looks out the window. There is a flurry of police cars dashing close behind the limo. There's too many! I can't shake them! Terror takes off his hat and bandana. I've got it, Skull Candy. <laughs> you guys are going to like this part. <laughs> Terror opens the hatch in the limo roof and climbs up on the top of the limo. The policemen have their guns drawn and, and fire at Terror, but they either miss or their shots were dodged. Terror gets down low on his stomach to avoid getting hit. All right, humans, if you want to play that way. Terror pulls out two Tommy guns from his jacket and props them up against his chest. Have at me! Da -da 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 -da. Do you remember when I drew that? <laughs> Here. Look at them guns. <laughs> That was actually my first time drawing a legitimate gun. <laughs> I think I did pretty good. <laughs> Terror starts to fire at the policeman, one car after another veering off to the side, often crashing into other cars. Yeah! Get him, boss! Holy Jesus! <sighs> He's so evil. As soon as, our, like, as soon as all of the cars are gone, Terror tosses the guns away and jumps back into the limo. Kara and Skullcandy cheer, but Maya merely stays silent. Terror takes his seat with a pleased grin on his face. We should be good for the rest of the trip. So why are we heading to the White House? Why for the Ruby of Intensity? Why else would we, would we be going cross-country to Washington, D.C. to meet that stupid president of yours? Ha! <laughs> I think not. Terror trails off, chuckling to himself at his joke. Kara, why are you here? Terror chose me to go along with him. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why. He chose me because I'm worthy. Well, like a meat shield. Ladies, ladies, you're both beautiful. Save it for when I'm not here. <sighs> yes, Your Majesty. Maya takes a sip of her pop and Kara notices. You have pop? Yeah. Can I have some? Yeah, but Terror had this one. Might be contaminated. Terror rolls his eyes. Gimme! Maya hands over the pop to Kara. Alright, guys, the big house! Oh. Maya begins to get up with everyone else, but Terror pushes her back down. You are staying here with Skull Candy. Terror suddenly stiffens up as if he's sensing something. Lucia. Just gonna warn you, everybody. Things are gonna get a bit morbid pretty soon, so get ready. <laughs> Meanwhile, Lucia's quarters. Quick description. Lucia's forest is a forest like no other. It is void of color, let alone emotions. The towering pines cover any sign of the sky, making the forest extremely dim. No sounds of life can reassure anyone comfort. Not even the rustling of pines can be heard. Only small wisps can be caught floating around like fireflies, lighting up Lucia's hair-covered face.
Lucia is currently sitting on a stump, staring at Kaylee as she is sitting on the colorless gra glass. Grass. <laughs> I really want to kill you right now. Well, you can't, really. I already know that. He's reminded me countless times. If you dare lay a claw on her, I will free your head from your shoulders. Or at least that's what he said. Sounds like fun. Yeah, more fun than being created. What did I ever do but create you? How is that even bad? I have my reasons, human. Tell me, I want to know. No. Why? Because. That's not a reason. Stop pushing me. Just tell me! No! Why? <laughs> Lucia gets up suddenly and knocks Kaylee down. Lucia picks her up and chokes her. At this point, I don't care what Terror says he'll do to me. Lucia starts to choke her harder and harder. I just want you dead. Terror teleports in, surprising Lucia. She lets go of Kaylee, letting her drop to the floor, wheezing. Lucia! I touched the mic, whoops. Lucia turns around, expecting him to be in human form. He's in his true form, which startles her. Terror has an angry scowl on his face, his size representing his rage. Your Majesty, I, I can I can explain. You do not need to explain anything to me, Lucia. I already know perfectly well what you are about to do, you traitor. I'm trying to keep quiet over here. T -t -t traitor. Hold on, I'm gonna move down. That way I can feel more comfortable just being loud, I guess. Okay, okay, we're good. All right, let's do that. Let's do the screaming things again. Lucia! There we go. Lucia turns around, expecting him to be in human form. He is in his true form, which startles her. Terror has an angry scowl on his face, his size representing his rage. He... he your majesty, uh, I can explain. You do not need to explain anything to me, Lucia. I know perfectly well what you are about to do, you traitor. Traitor? Yes, I told you everything I had planned for her, and what do you do? You take her neck and try to crush it. I really thought I was going to like you, Lucia. Terror pulls out a ray of light from behind his back. Horrified, Lucia steps back and tries to run away to the safety of the forest. Terror brings her to his claw and squeezes her until she can't move. I'm sorry, please. Just give me another chance. To be honest, Lucia. Terror readies the ray as it sizzles in his hand. He opens his fist so he is able to strike Lucia and prevent her from getting away. I didn't need you anyway. Terror plunges the ray into Lucia's chest, her flesh being fried by the ray's heat and light. Lucia shrieks an earthreal cry of pain, and Terror smiles wickedly. To worsen the pain, he moves the ray about in her chest, causing her to scream louder with even more pain and suffering. Finally, Lucia fades away into oblivion, leaving only the ray of light in her place. Terror straightens up and tosses the ray of light away, making it disappear. His eyes fall on Kaylee, who is looking shocked. <laughs> Didn't expect me to take it that far, did you? Terror opens a portal for Kaylee. Your room should be ready now. I'll be back soon. Terror teleports away, leaving Kaylee alone in the colorless forest. Back in the real world. Terror teleports back in, only his gloves are stained a little and he has an awful grin on his face. What happened? Little Lucia has been exiled. Kara has a shocked look on her face. Oh. Moving on, Kara. We don't have all day. Terror allows Kara out first and takes one last look at Maya. Be good. Yep. Tara closes the door to the car and struts out onto the street with Kara close behind. Where to? We are heading to the big house, but for other reasons than you may expect. There is a gem called the Ruby of Intensity. It won't be very hard to find, because according to the books, we will find... 
By the way, if you actually look in the Sonic the Hedgehog comic encyclopedia and you look up the rings, this is true. Terror stoops down and picks up a tiny golden ring, much like the ones in the Sonic games. He gives it to Kara so she can examine it. It's like the size of your average ring. It's not like those big, gigantic hula hoops. Golden rings? Yes, they say that these rings are the deposits of the emeralds, or in this case, the ruby. They were right. They continue to follow a small trail of rings until it leads them to a monument. The monument seems to represent a shadow creature holding a tattered flag with a man next to it holding America's flag. The flags are held so that they cross, seeming to show a seeming to show a relationship between the two races. Terror sizes up, the mom sizes up the monument, looking for some sort of lever or switch, perhaps even a sign of a door. When did this get here? Look at the plaque. Kara steps up to the monument to read the plaque. This commemorative monument was made to the success of teaming up with the sh shadows of the Shadow Realm. These curious creatures have made us a long-lasting deal that goes fair both ways. Even though you may not see them around today, they might show, themsel sh <laughs> they might show themselves in a few times in science broadcasts. Two races together as one now protect a power that will guide our future and technology. <laughs> Humans always think everything is incredible. I've found the hatch, but we'll have to move quickly. The next part doesn't make quite quite much sense. I mean, he just teleports in, but there's actually some logic behind it. If you want explanations, I'll tell you. Terror grabs Kara and they teleport into a chamber inside the monument. Terror's eyes glow softly in the darkness of the chamber. Don't say a word. Here, full screen. can't tell already terror is still pretty big even as a human <laughs> without uttering a word terror seems to glide as he makes his way through the maze-like chamber beneath the monument letting his keen nocturnal senses lead him through the pitch black halls with ease Kara, with the limited senses of a human stumbles along behind him trying to catch up with her idol Finally, they reach a door made of stainless steel, completely different from the surrounding copper-like walls. Here we are. What's behind the door? The holding chamber, the ruby. Get your knife ready. Terra pushes the heavy steel door to find a dozen armed guards waiting for them. They start to fire, bullets spraying everywhere around them as Terra and Kara take each of the guards out, one by one, until the room is cleared and only the invaders remain. Terror's eyes scan the room to find the ruby of intensity on the far wall in front of him. <laughs> that wasn't as hard as I thought it would be, says the one with the bullet hole in her arm. Hey! Never mind that. Now, we have more important things to attend to. Terror slowly approaches the ruby, marveling at its fury beauty. By the way... If you Minecraft fans are that intense, you will notice that there is a creeper face. That was totally unintentional. But does it look like fire or just does it look really dull? <laughs> ruby of intensity, by the way. The ruby of intensity. The final piece of the Omega Emerald. Taro takes the ruby into his gloved hands with care and continues to stare into the ruby's flames. An alarm suddenly goes off, snapping Terror out of his trance. Let's move! Terror grabs Kara by the wrist as he speeds down the maze-like hallways and, and teleports back outside the monument. He dashes to the limo, tosses Kara inside, and hops in himself as Skullcandy puts the pedal to the metal. What's the Omega Emerald? The final piece of the universe. If you gather, gather the Chaos Emeralds and the Secret Star Emeralds and fuse them together with the Ruby of Intensity, you will make the Omega Emerald. Its power is nearly limitless, and with it we can prevent the heroes from having a winning chance. Skull Candy, where to? Back to the stronghold to fuse the emeralds together. Good. What about the cops? We will not worry about them this time. Approaching wormhole. The limo is suddenly sucked into space. Kara and Maya stare out the window in awe, but Terror just sits there as if he did it every day. Skullcandy, have you given Maya the wrist bug yet? 
Yep, the little bugger latched on with ease. Hmm, everything is going smoother than I expected. Don't get too comfortable, boss. There's a bump in every road. Indeed. The limo suddenly halts, tossing Kara and Maya a few seats forward. Terror had little or no reaction to this, however, for he simply leaned forward a bit and snapped back like a rubber band. Terra gets up and opens the car door. Don't leave me waiting for you now. Maya gathers her things and heads out the and heads out the door, gener terror generously held open for her. Kara begins to walk through the door, but Terror slams the door on her face. Terror and Skullcandy, from the front seat, looking out, laugh horribly as Kara holds her, holds her bleeding nose. After Terror had his fun, he opens the door and walks away to catch up with Maya. Kara sighs, heads out the limo, and slams the door behind her. But wait, there's more! <laughs> I told you this was going to be long. Terror strides ahead of Maya and pushes the humongous wooden door to his stronghold to draw dramatically. He rushes ahead of Maya and Kara, as if in a hurry. The two humans exchange glances, and they both roll their eyes. I'll meet you in the sitting room. Come by once you are ready, Vedere Dare. What about me? You, you go find Betty and help her secure the holes. Ugh, fine. Kara walks off down a separate hall, leaving Maya alone in the musty stronghold. She looks around herself, observing the world she had once thought she could only see within her head. Picturing time. The walls, floors, and ceiling are made of gigantic stone bricks, each of them is about as tall as her. There are small crevices all about the worn stone, just enough for bugs to scurry inside. No lighting or light fixtures hang from the ceiling or cling to the wall. Only small purple fire sprites accompany the teenage girl as she walks cautiously down the barren stone hall, bringing sufficient light, light to her surroundings. Maya's petite steps on the stone echo across the halls, only emphasizing her loneliness in the stronghold. <sighs> How am I supposed to find my way around this maze of a castle? With me, of course. Maya turns around quickly, but she relaxes as soon as she sees it's only swamp water. Behind him is his specialized, glassy-winged moth, standing at attention with patience. Swamp water looks like a fat, dark gray snake with a head like a dome with spiky edges. He has no legs, so he slimper, slimpers. He simply slithers like a snake. Try saying that five times fast. His hands have only four fingers, three true fingers and one thumb. His eyes are tall, crimson ovals with red slits as pupils. Despite these spooky features, he looks upon Maya with a smile, showing kindness in his eyes. It's just me, no worries. I wasn't gonna let you I wasn't gonna let one of the centipedes guide you along. Thanks, Swampers. Come on, I'll show you to your quarters. The moth can carry more than one person. Swamp water helps Maya onto the moth's furry thorax. Maya pets the moth kindly, and the moth purrs with the delight. It's when its wings shaking a little. Ho, ho, don't get him started. He's going to be nudging you all day if you keep doing that. He's fluffy, though. I know, I know. Swampwater picks up the reins on the moth and takes off. They easily glide along the hall, speeding by other hallways effortlessly. The wind pushes against Maya's hair, forcing it all behind her, behind her head. She holds onto her drawing book tight as the moth increases speed. Then... The moth lands with ease on the smooth stone, the ride over before Maya knew it. Good luck moving in. You should be able to reach the sitting room from here, by the way. Should be down to the left. Thanks, Swappers. Anytime, human. Swampwater mounts his moth and takes off. After Swampwater disappears from sight, Maya turns to her door. The door is a deep wooden purple, reminding her of the extremely rare and curious wood the trees in the Shadow Realm produced, or provided. Taking a deep breath, she opens the door with uncertainty. The room is surprisingly welcoming, well-furnished and well-kept. The room is slightly bigger than her own at home, with a ceiling a few feet higher than her, giving, him some, giving her some sort of spaciousness. The room itself is shaped somewhat like a hexagon, with a bed at the top left. 
The bed looks royal and simple at the same time, with purple and crimson sheets pointing to her egocentric host. Maya walks over to the bed to feel the sheets. The sheets are downy and warm, as if they were alive. The pillows were the same way, except as having... In Except instead of having a soft texture, it was smooth and plushy. Next to the bed, in the middle of the room, there is a shadow flame fireplace. The purple shadow flame glows warmly, lighting the whole, whole room with a very light purple tint. The other, in the other sections of the room, there is a vanity, wardrobe, and a chest that reminds her of a treasure chest. Maya sets her stuff down on the bed and looks around. She then sighs out of hope, out of hopelessness. She casually makes the rounds and peeks inside the drawers of the vanity and leafs through the strange outfits in the wardrobe. When she arrives at the chest, she bends down to check if it's locked. The chest lid won't budge. Maya gets back up, looking at the chest quizzically. She then decides to head back out to the barren halls and follow Swampwater's directions. Maya arrives at the room to find Tara sitting comfortably by, in a chair by a shadow flame fireplace and smoking what seemed to be a pipe. He is in his true form now, being several times bigger than Maya, making him look like a giant. Come here, human. Maya timidly steps forward a few paces into the room. I said come here. Maya, understanding what was being asked, speeds along quicker now, trying to come up to the front of his chair, but the fireplace's cold was too chilling to get that far. Terror rolls his eyes. Over here, fool. Terror pats the chair to his left, one a lot smaller than his, but still far too big for a human. Maya runs up to the chair, and Terror uses his telekinetic powers to bring her aloft onto the gargantuan chair. Tara sits quietly, as if focused on the fire, and Maya makes herself comfortable on the velvet cushion chair. Why is the fire in my room so warm, and then you're so cold? I'm, I'm giving the fire particularly cold items, such as zero ice from the mountain of in Burblehem. Yours is fueled with ever coal from the mines of Diggerupt. See the difference? Yeah. What's the plan you have for me? Tara smiles. That's the irony of the situation. There is no plan. What? But you always have a plan. I know. We have to play the waiting game for three days while the emeralds are fusing. What we will be doing on those days, I haven't figured out. Three days? Yep. Maya shivers and tucks her legs in to try and stay warm. Wow. Tara, look Tara looks at Maya for a little while, then tosses her a coat that is made of a fiery dragon's skin. Put that on. It will keep you from turning into a meat sickle. Maya wraps the skin around her, the warmth of the coat instantly warming her to the perfect degree. You go ahead and keep that. You'll need it. Thank you. Yep. They both sit quietly for some time. Terror stands up from his chair and sighs. I really should be going now. Terror turns to Maya. You may remain here, or you may return to your quarters, Veda right there. Your choice. Your choice. Where are you going? To see if I must exile any more recruits recruits from my arsenal. Tara strides out of the sitting room, leaving Maya alone beside the cold shadow flame fireplace. And we have finally reached the end. <laughs> For now. <sighs> well, I actually have some editing to do on the end of that right there. I have other plans. But who what else? It's practically it for now. Let's see the time. 34 minutes. I hope you guys like that. <laughs> An intimidating number. Okay. So, if you want to see more of the end, then please, pretty please, let me know. And I will put the link to the website in the description if you really don't want to type out Strange Stories 707 out onto um, Google. But 
keep that in mind. It's going to be very helpful because I won't put the website link in every single video because that's a, that's a bit of a thing to do. Here's a reminder. Strange stories, all one word, and then 707. Then the first thing you see, or if you just want to go ahead and click on one of these, <laughs> then you go ahead and do that. I also want to, yeah, I'm going to talk about the other stories on here. So the other stories I've got on here, rather than the end, is for, is not for, but we've got the Nine Stances of the Apocalypse, which obviously is an old story, because I mean, look at this drawing. There's so many things wrong with it, I need to redo it. I even forgot one of the stanzas, geez. But this story may be finished, but it isn't finished finished. There's a disclaimer at the top here. This story will be revised and may have to be rewritten. Help wanted. AU sans experts needed. Thus, nothing here is canon. Yet. The power of the word yet. But, the Nine Sands of the Apocalypse is a very long story. It takes you around 40 minute, 48 minutes to read. And if you like um, this Undertale fandom with all the Sanses and whatnot, and you're also a fan of terror... Um, then you are going to like this. The Nine Sanses of the Apocalypse features around nine Sanses in this story, as well as a few papyruses as well. Not wanting to forget, forget about those guys. And also has the rare appearance of Doomfang, Terror's old assistant. And I mean old, that was like last year. <laughs> The other story, The Devil of Ed's World, obviously points to, you know, Ed's World. <laughs> Basically, this it's a crossover between Terror and Ed's World, where Terror has teamed up with Tord to defeat um, Tom, Ed, and Matt, and eventually take over the entire world. There are plenty of jokes in here. One of them I had to get rid of because it didn't make sense with anything or at least somebody thought but whatever terror is kind of a jerk in this one i mean when is, when is he isn't and another thing the information bank the information bank is for characters that you probably don't know about. I did a little bit more of trivia on them here. Well, some of them. I mean, ones that were not mine, I just, like, you either play the game or you go to the wiki. <laughs> here. I'll do one for, uh, I'll do Swamp Water and Skull Candy, and then I'm, then I'm going to end it. Okay. Swamp water. Swamp water is the result of one of Terror's experiments, XP Mark 1, 1 209. He was given the name Swamp Water because Terror had not known about creating life at the time, so he didn't so how he did it was unclear or murky, like Swamp Water. Swamp Water is now Terror's tech guy, doing research on future victims, keeping bugs in order, and even keeping track of Terror himself. Gonna just add the bugs in there too. The several assortments, assortments of bugs are another result of one of Terra's experiments, Experiment 213. They can be found in many different types, centipedes, earwigs, and maggots being the most common. There are also, are, bleh, there are also cockroaches, mosquitoes, moths, spiders, leeches, and many more that are soon to come. Which is what you guys can decide as well. And moving on to skull candy. Skull Candy is a centipede that retired due to a broken mandible and poor eyesight. He's still kept around. He's still kept around for non-combat related missions. Skull Candy is good friends with Swampwater and is always kind to any weak prisoners that Terror beats up. He lives in one of the many crevices in the castle walls. There's going to be a lot more said on Terror, by the way. 
as well as, um, let's see, I need to type a little bit more about the infecteds, but you go ahead and read that. <laughs> anyway, I need to stop stalling. My computer's going to die if you can't see that down there. Um, so thank you all so much for listening and or watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Gotta go fast. Bye.